Hi guys, we're going to be looking right now at how you can insert equations into a Microsoft Word document. So uh, once you're inside Word, you'll uh, come on up to Insert and scroll down and select Equation. You'll see that a whole bunch of math symbols appear here at the top. Why don't we start with something like calculating the uh, mean of a series of numbers. I've uh, already got a bunch of numbers uh, in mind. Why don't we take the mean of the, um, the odd numbers from 1 through 20. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, all the way up to the last odd number, 19. Let's see what the mean of all those numbers are. So uh, I'm going to begin by uh, setting up, while this is highlighted in orange, it means that it can be replaced with whatever I put in next. So if I want to call these odd numbers all of my different x variables, I'll type in x and equals. Now actually if I want to make the mean, then I need to put a little bar over the x in order for it to be the right notation. So let's just highlight the x and I can come up to one of these menus at the top and the one that says accent puts anything on top, I'm going to select the mean notation, the bar, and there we go, we've now got x bar, which represents the mean. In order to do a mean, we know that we have to add all the numbers and then divide by the number of numbers. So let's create a fraction. I want to use this notation. These are not good notations. And so in the numerator, we'll put in the sum of all of the numbers. 1 plus 3 plus 5. Now because this is a small number of numbers, I can put them all in without worrying too much about the impact. If I count the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there are 10 numbers, so I want to divide by 10. Now of course, because I'm in Microsoft Word, this is not going to actually calculate the mean for me. To do that, I would probably need a calculator, but uh, at least it sort of shows up very nicely. It's great notation. And this is an image file that we can copy into uh, any other document or file. Now, if you have more numbers in this, as you, as you might with a large data set, then we don't want to necessarily show all the numbers. One thing you can do is uh, demonstrate that you're going to be adding the numbers in your data set, but instead of writing all of them down, which is a bit tedious, if we can get rid of the other ones, and have dot dot dot, which means, of course, that we're adding all of the corresponding numbers that belong in this part of the sequence. And you can save yourself a lot of space and yet still be clear about what it is that you're doing. And I would uh, recommend this approach, as I say, when you've got a large data set of, let's say, more than 10 different numbers that you're finding the mean of. Now let's look at a more complicated formula. Look at uh, how we can write down the formula for the correlation coefficient of r. So again, I want to insert a brand new formula. Insert equation. And uh, this time, of course, we're dealing with r equals. Now, if you go to the right page in section 18b of the textbook, you'll find some formulas for Pearson's correlation coefficient. And so I'm going to be working with what I believe to be the uh, most useful version of this formula. And so it's also a fraction. So let's set up the fraction. And in the numerator, it's going to be a sigma. I'll find sigma under operator. Sigma of the product xy, which means we'll be adding together all of the products of the x variable times their corresponding y variable. And from this we will subtract another fraction. The numerator of which is sigma of x. Oops. There we go. Times the sigma of y. And 
and down at the bottom, I want to have n representing the number of values. In the denominator of the correlation coefficient formula, I'll set up a square root. And so inside my first square root, I'll have the sigma. I need to create an exponent. And so while this is highlighted, the place where I want the exponent or the power to go, I'll say script, and I'll select this first one. There we go. And I want it to be x squared. And from that, I'm going to subtract a fraction, which is sigma of x times the sigma of y. Oops, sorry, that's not right. It's just the sigma of x. I was looking at the wrong part of the formula, sorry. So I'll highlight this part and put it into parentheses to show that the whole thing is being taken to a power. And uh, let's make sure that the, there we go, the whole thing, including the parentheses, is highlighted before applying the script to the power of 2. And in the denominator, I have an n. Now, as you might know, the other factor that goes in the bottom is also a square root of the same thing, but just with y's. Let me save myself a bit of effort and I'll copy all of that area of the formula and then move over just beside it and paste it again and I can come through and just change all of these x's to y's. And now I've got the formula of the correlation coefficient. Now there's a another formula for the correlation coefficient which uh, you might know already. I'll Put it down in the next line, insert a brand new formula. It's a very simple one where we can summarize what's being written here with the fraction. Oops, sorry. S, and let me highlight it. Uh, Oh, I don't know where my equation tools went. Oh, there they are. S. Now this time I want to do a subscript. S sub xy. That's known as the covariance. And down in the bottom, I've got the standard deviation of x. So again, I want it to be a subscript. Times the standard deviation, highlight it, subscript of y. Now I just want to point out that the notation here for these standard deviations, sx, should not be confused with what we refer to as the standard deviation when using our calculator. You do not want to use the sx value from your calculator when you do one of our stats. You want to use the thing that's right above or below it. It looks like a, a little Greek symbol, kind of circular, uh, with a sub x. That's the standard deviation that we will always use. It's a bit of a misfortune that our TI-84s give this kind of notation, uh, which also appears on the calculator, but is not the one that we want to write down. We always want the other one in one of our stats that appears just above or below it, as I said. And then there's actually uh, another formula that we can use for R. This is the simplest, but frankly, once you've written it down, you may as well replace it immediately with uh, this one, because this one's far more useful. But there is one more formula for R that I want to show you. And I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to take this whole formula and uh, copy it down so I can save myself a bit of writing. And the, uh, the numerator and the denominator begin in the same way, but there's a couple of changes. Um, over at this area, 
let's uh, get rid of this fraction and we'll replace it with n times the mean of x so I'll highlight the x equation tools and I'll put in the mean symbol and then right beside it goes the mean of oops it's not really what I want to do let's uh, hmm. see what I can do about that ah there we are and the mean of y and down in the bottom it would actually be convenient for me to leave it as sx sy I'll show you that in a minute. And so let me put these uh, formulas in the order that you might use them. So uh, perhaps you introduce this one first, way back when very beginning if you're calculating correlation coefficient you say okay correlation coefficient is this nice and simple but uh, maybe it would be more convenient to uh, use this formula and so you replace it with a more useful one or perhaps you want to integrate the use of sophisticated process with simple processes. And that's where this alternative formula comes in. Here's the idea. Instead of replacing this with uh, replacing the original formula with this one, that is very useful when you're not integrating any simple processes. Uh, suppose that you want to integrate some simple processes. Well, then perhaps you'd move this one to be your next line. And this, of course, creates the need in order for us to calculate our mean, which is a simple process, as well as our standard deviation, which is a simple process according to the IB criteria. So at this stage, maybe we need to pause and do our simple processes where we calculate x bar. And you do something similar in order to calculate y bar oh, it's a shame it made it so small perhaps I'll uh, undo that and just create a brand new formula then. and so on the second one of course we'll have calculated y bar we have to be careful that we don't select too much I don't want to replace everything Tricky. There we go. Now just the X is highlighted. Let's replace it with a Y. And of course, these numbers are all going to change. I'm not too concerned about what the numbers are. Let's just pretend that they're the average of the evens for variety. And again, of course, N hasn't changed. It's still 10. And then maybe we want to calculate the standard deviation of X and the standard deviation of Y in order to substitute those values into this formula. So uh, I'll create a couple of additional formulas. There they are. But this time, I want to create the standard deviation of x. So that's s sub, oops, s sub x. And I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to come down here to something that I've already written and select that to copy and paste into this area of the formula. And then we'll do something similar for y. So again, I'll be clever and. Oh, whoops. Sorry. And now, of course, I just need to change the x's into y's. And so uh, 
By calculating x bar and y bar, the means, and also calculating the standard deviation of x and y, you've now created some simple processes. And we can now use these answers to substitute back into this, which is a complicated process, a sophisticated one. Or, as I said, alternatively, you can just skip the simple ones if you feel you've already got enough of them in your project and go directly to this formula down here. And that's how to use uh, equations in Microsoft Word.